Hi, welcome to another episode of Ask Kanti. For those of you who don't know me, I'm Priyanka Bhardwaj, founder and CEO of Marriage for Kuranti, which is a matrimonial advisory service. I'm going to leave a link to the website below in case you'd like to check us out. If you're new to this channel, we talk a lot about love, dating, relationships, marriage, and even the markets that they're traded on. In case you haven't subscribed to our channel, you can do so now by clicking the bell icon below so that you can be the first to receive these videos when they go out. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be talking a lot about love, heartbreak, rejection, and ways of coping with it. It's been a year since the start of the pandemic, and we could all use some external support when it comes to dealing with any sort of heartbreak. Now, while I'm going to be talking about heartbreak in the context of romantic relationships, these could very well apply to any sort of heartbreak. So today we're going to be talking about heartbreak and healthy ways of coping with it. When you have a breakup with somebody, you feel a barrage of emotions. You feel sadness, you feel anger, you feel disbelief. You know, you're shocked that something that was going so well no longer exists. Uh, you feel vindictive because you're so angry that this happened to you and you want to um, get back at the world, get back at the person who's broken your heart. You may even feel very desperate, um, desperate to fix things and you know change it back to the way it was. All of these feelings after a breakup are completely, completely normal, right? Um, these are ways that our bodies and minds have evolved over time to deal with shock, to deal with anxiety, to deal with anger. Now, why does this happen? We are in a secure relationship and we're feeling extremely comfortable and everything is in control. Um, you do something nice for someone and that's either appreciated or reciprocated. But at a time when you break up, your actions are no longer correlative to the reaction that you receive from the other end. And it is very frustrating when you know you try and try and try and you're not seeing the results of your efforts. Right? At that point of time, what you're feeling is an immense loss of control. And to deal with this immense loss of control, your mind and body are desperately fighting to, to, to regain that control. Time is a great healer. Uh, time helps our bodies to adjust uh, to a new environment. And over time, we all sort of, most of us come around um, and we, you know, we feel better. Those, those intense feelings, um, you know, reduce, subside over time and we all come around. But those feelings remain unprocessed and they tend to manifest themselves in different ways. Some of us may become really distrustful. Uh, we may not be able to trust anybody because our trust has been betrayed in the past. We may become vengeful where we're seeking revenge uh, for what happened to us. Maybe not consciously, but some part of you kind of wants to take what you've experienced and inflict it on another person. Um, you may, you may become very defensive, you may get very protective and you, know, you may not allow people to come close to you because you're afraid that you may get hurt again and you may not know how to process that hurt. Um, but unless you intentionally act on processing these feelings, they don't go away. They do manifest themselves and you know, there is collateral damage along the way. So today I wanted to share a few ways in which I've seen people cope with this in a manner that's more healthy than allowing time to do this. First of all, when you experience trauma, when you experience heartbreak, grief is what you're supposed to feel and grief is what you're feeling, right? Most of us, when we fall and we're hurt, we're so busy trying to get up and run because we don't want to acknowledge that we could fall and we don't want to acknowledge that we may be hurt. We're trying to tell ourselves, we're trying to tell the world that we're really brave. But actually, you're hurt and there's pain. And 
what do you do when there's pain? You cry, right? Um, think about think about little children. When they fall and they're hurt really badly, they cry, they wail, they bawl, right? Because they don't know any other way to process pain. So when you have a breakup, what you're experiencing is trauma and what you're experiencing is grief. So it's really important to acknowledge those feelings and to allow yourself to feel those feelings because breakups hurt and it's okay to cry. Cry and cry and cry. Cry. Cry for however long you want. Cry till it stops hurting because that's what we do when we're physically hurt, right? So when it comes to mental hurt, why do we deal with it any differently? Once you're done crying, see where you're hurt. Think about children again. You know, once they stop crying, they're looking to see where they're hurt. They hold the wrong spot and they start wailing again because, you know, they remember that, you know, they had a fall, they were in pain, right? And then when you tell them, wait a minute, that's not where you were hurt. You were hurt on the other hand, for instance. They feel very confused. They don't know what they're crying for anymore and they don't know where they actually got hurt. So if you experience something similar, It's completely normal. You may be crying thinking that this person left you, but what might really be hurt is probably your ego. And, you know, it's okay to feel confused. It's okay to wildly oscillate between what is actually hurting you, right? But at some point, you've got to see where you're hurt. You've got to see where the bruises are. You've got to see why you're in so much pain in order to deal with it. Right? Once you know where you're hurt, you've got to tend to that pain. Because nobody else is coming to tend to that pain. You have to you have to ask yourself why you're hurting and how you're going to make yourself feel better. The answers cannot be, oh, this person needs to come back, this person needs to apologize, this person shouldn't have done what they did, that those cannot be legitimate answers to make yourself feel better because you're not getting those answers, right? If you really want to break away from this vicious loop of trying to get external validation for the pain that you're feeling, for for the closure that your body is craving, that's not going to happen. You have to intentionally find ways to cope with it on your own, but you have to cope with it. Now, how do you cope with that pain? Do you need to talk to a friend? Do you need to talk to a therapist? You have to assess how hurt you are and what capabilities you have to deal with that pain. Now, if you're not going to be able to do this by just talking to a few friends, um, you may want to see a therapist. And therapy takes time. The most important thing is to be patient with yourself because you will come out feeling stronger. Thank you.